the faust legend from marlowe to goethe by kuno frunke phd lld doctor of literature professor of the history of german culture harvard university 1913 this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org the false legend from marlow to goethe by kuno franke the false legend is a conglomerate of anonymous popular traditions largely of medieval origin which in the latter part of the sixteenth century came to be associated with an actual individual of the name of faustus whose notorious career during the first four decades of the century as a pseudo-scientific mountebank juggler and magician can be traced through various parts of germany the false book of fifteen eighty seven the earliest collection of these tales is of prevailingly theological character it represents faust as a sinner and reprobate and it holds up his compact with mephistopheles and his subsequent damnation as an example of human recklessness and as a warning to the faithful from this faust book that is from its english translation which appeared in fifteen eighty eight marlowe took his tragedy of dr faustus fifteen eighty nine published sixteen o four and parenthesis in marlowe's drama faust appears as a typical man of the renaissance as an explorer and adventurer as a superman craving for extraordinary power wealth enjoyment and worldly eminence the finer emotions are hardly touched upon mephistopheles the medieval devil harsh and grim and fierce bent on seduction without any comprehension of human aspirations helen of troy is a she-devil and becomes the final means of false destruction false career has hardly an element of true greatness none of the many tricks conjurings and miracles which faust performs with mephistopheles help has any relation to the deeper meaning of life from the compact on to the end hardly anything happens which brings faust inwardly nearer either to heaven or hell but there is a sturdiness of character and stirring intensity of action with a happy admixture of buffoonery through it all and we feel something of the pathos and paradox of human passions in the fearful agony of false final doom the german popular false drama of the seventeenth century and its outgrowth the puppet plays are a reflex both of marlowe's tragedy and the false book of fifteen eighty seven although they contain a number of original scenes notably the council of the devils at the beginning here again the underlying sentiment is the abhorrence of human recklessness and extravagance in some of these plays the vanity of bold ambition is brought out with particular emphasis through the contrast between the daring and dissatisfied false and his farcical counterpart the jolly and contented casperly in the last scene while faust in despair and contrition is waiting for the sound of the midnight bell which is to be the signal of his destruction casperly as night watchman patrols the streets of the town calling out the hours and singing the traditional verses of admonition to quiet and orderly conduct to the sixteenth and seventeenth century then faust appeared as a criminal who sins against the eternal laws of life as a rebel against holiness who ruins his better self and finally earns the merited reward of his misdeeds he could not appear thus to the eighteenth century the eighteenth century is the age of rationalism and romanticism the eighteenth century glorifies human reason and human feeling the right of man and the dignity of man are its principal watchwords 
such an age was bound to see in faust a champion of freedom nature truth such an age was bound to see in faust a symbol of human striving for completeness of life it is lessing who has given to the faust legend this turn his faust unfortunately consisting only of a few fragmentary sketches is a defense of rationalism the most important of these fragments reserved to us in copies by some friends of lessing's is the prelude a council of devils satan is receiving reports from his subordinates as to what they have done to bring harm to the realm of god the first devil who speaks has set the hut of some pious poor on fire the second has buried a fleet of usurers in the waves both excite satan's disgust for he says to make the pious poor still poorer means only to chain him all the more firmly to god End of that quote. and the usurers if instead of being buried in the waves they had been allowed to reach the goal of their voyage would have wrought new evil on distant shores much more satisfied is satan with the report of the third devil who has stolen the first kiss from a young innocent girl and thereby breathed the flame of desire into her veins for he has worked evil in the world of the spirit and that means much more and is much more greater triumph for hell than to work evil in the world of bodies but it is the fourth devil to whom satan gives the prize he has not done anything as yet he has only a plan but a plan which if carried out would put the deeds of all the other devils into the shade the plan quote, to snatch from God his favorite. End quote. This favorite of God is Faust, quote, a solitary, brooding youth, renouncing all passion except the passion for truth, entirely living in truth, entirely absorbed in it. End quote. To snatch him from God, that would be a victory over which the whole realm of night would rejoice satan is enchanted the war against truth is his element yes faust must be seduced he must be destroyed and he shall be destroyed through his very aspiration Quote, dost thou not say he has desire for knowledge that is enough for perdition End quote his striving for truth is to lead him into darkness under such exclamations the devils break up to set about their work of seduction but as they are breaking up there is heard from above a divine voice quote, ye shall not conquer End quote. it cannot be denied that goethe's earliest false conception the so-called Ur Faust of seventeen seventy three and seventy four lacks the wide sweep of thought that characterizes these fragments of Lessing's drama. His Faust of the storm and stress period is essentially a romanticist. He is a dreamer, craving for a sight of the divine, longing to fathom the inner workings of nature. But he is also an unruly individualist a reckless despiser of accepted morality and it is hard to see how his relation with gretchen which forms by far the largest part of the ur faust can lead to anything but a tragic catastrophe only goethe's second false conception which sets in with the end of the nineties of the eighteenth century opens up a clear view of the heights of life goethe is now in the full maturity of his powers a man widely separated from the impetuous youth of the seventies whose promethean emotions had burst forth with volcanic passion he had meanwhile become a statesman and a philosopher he had come to know in the court of weimar a model of paternal government conservative yet liberally inclined and friendly to all higher culture 
he had found his truly spiritual relation to Frau von Stein a safe harbor for his tempestuous feelings. He had been brought face to face during his sojourn in Italy with the wonders of classic art. The study of Spinoza and his own scientific investigations had confirmed him in a thoroughly monistic view of the world and strengthened his belief in a universal law which makes evil itself an integral part of the good the example of schiller as well as his own practical experience had taught him that the untrammeled living out of personality must go hand in hand with incessant work for the common welfare of mankind all this is reflected in the complete first of eighteen o eight it finds its most comprehensive expression in part second the bequest of the dying poet to posterity reckless endeavor incessant striving from lower spheres of life to higher ones from the sensuous to the spiritual from enjoyment to work from creed to deed from self to humanity this is the moving thought of goethe's completed faust the keynote is struck in the quote, prologue in heaven end quote faust so we hear the daring idealist the servant of god is to be tempted by mephisto the despiser of reason the materialistic scoffer but we also hear and we hear it from god's own lips that the tempter will not succeed god allows the devil free play because he knows that he will frustrate his own ends Faust will be led astray, quote, man errs while he strives, end quote, but he will not abandon his higher aspirations. Through aberration and sin, he will find the true way toward which his inner nature instinctively guides him. He will not eat dust. Even in the compact with Mephisto, the same ineradicable optimism asserts itself false wager with the devil is nothing but an act of temporary despair and the very fact that he does not hope anything from it shows that he will win it he knows that sensual enjoyments will never give him satisfaction he knows that as long as he gives himself up to self-gratification there will never be a moment to which he would say quote, abide thou art so fair End quote from the outset we feel that by living up to the very terms of the compact faust will rise superior to it that by rushing into the whirlpool of earthly experience and passion his being will be heightened and expanded and thus everything in the whole drama all its incidents and all its characters become episodes in the rounding out of this grand all comprehensive personality gretchen and helena wagner and mephisto homunculus and euphorion the emperor's court and the shades of the greek past the broodings of medieval mysticism and the practical tasks of modern industrialism the enlightened despotism of the eighteenth century and the ideal democracy of the future all this and a great deal more enters into faust's being he strides on from experience to experience from task to task expiating guilt by doing losing himself and finding himself again blinded in old age by dame care he feels a new light kindled within dying he gazes into a far future and even in the heavenly regions he goes on ever changing into new and higher and finer forms it is this irrepressible spirit of striving which makes goethe's faust the bible of modern humanity End of 
the faust legend from marlowe to goethe by kuno franke 